Kinaston McShine. Photo, Linda Yablonsky. Kinaston McShine, one of the most influential curators of his generation, has died. Born in Port of Spain, Trinidad on February 20, 1935, McShine earned degrees from Queen's Royal College and Dartmouth College before attending graduate school at the University of Michigan and then New York University's Institute of Fine Arts. He taught art history at Hunter College and the School of Visual Arts and received honorary degrees from the San Francisco Institute of the Arts and the University of the West Indies. In 1965, Mukshine became the curator of painting and sculpture at the Jewish Museum, where he organized the seminal 1966 exhibition Primary Structures, Younger British and American Sculpture. Featuring work by Donald Judd, Ellsworth Kelly, and Andrew Itt, the show was the first ever museum survey of minimal sculpture. Commenting on the show, McShine wrote, The sculptors represented in this exhibition are not consciously allied in a school or in a specific movement, but they do share a stylistic tendency by reason of their interest in primary artistic structure. The sculpture is often architectonic, if not architectural. Most of the work does not use base or pedestal, some are oriented to the walls, and some even to the ceiling. The artist feels free to utilize and activate the space of a room at the outdoors according to the internal necessities of the work. In 1967, Mukshine was named acting director of the Jewish Museum, but left a year later to work at the Museum of Modern Art in New York as associate curator. In 1970, he curated Information, a landmark exhibition widely considered the first survey of conceptual art by a major American museum. McShine went on to organize a number of pioneering exhibitions at the institution, including Ways of Looking 1971, a retrospective of Andy Warhol 1989, and the Museum as Muse, Artists Reflect 1999, more while at MoMA. McShine served as curator of exhibitions 1971-84, senior curator 1984-2001, acting chief curator 2001-03, and chief curator at large 2003-08. He also initiated MoMA's Elaine Danheiser Projects series in 1971. The program focused on presenting experimental works by emerging artists and on giving younger curators opportunities to organize exhibitions. Over the course of his career, McShine produced over a dozen exhibition catalogues including Richard Serra Sculpture, 40 Years 2007, and received the CCS Boward Award for Curatorial Excellence in 2003. He also served as a board member at the International Association of Art Critics, the College Art Association of Museums, and the American Federation of Arts, among others. Les David Zwinner. Photo, Wikipedia. As dealer David Zwinner celebrates the 25th year since he established his first gallery in Soho, he is once again planning to expand. The gallerist told Robin Pogrebin of the New York Times that he is opening a fourth New York space. Located on a corner lot at 540 West 21st Street, the new five-story $50 million gallery will be designed by Italian architect Renzo Piano, whose other buildings include the Whitney Museum of American Art and the Manil Collection in Houston. After the new gallery opens in 2020, Zwinner plans to move the core of his operations there, and he may decide to close his West 19th Street location, which he is only renting. The project will be Piano's first commercial gallery. While it is still early in the design process, Piano told Pogrebin that he will aim to create a visual psychological connection between the building and the street, commenting on the expansion. Zwinner said, Artists want you to stay small they hate when stuff changes. How do you keep it intimate? While being able to compete in the increasingly competitive art market, he also added, On the other hand, if you don't move, some artists will feel you're not doing enough for their careers. They want to have intimacy, but they also want to have the reach. More or later this month, Zwinner will also open his first gallery in Asia. Meanwhile, this Saturday, Zwinner will present a special exhibition showcasing the work of artists that have shaped the gallery's program since its founding in 1993 in both of his Chelsea locations. Among the artists featured are Marlene Dumas, Onkawara, Chris Affili, Richard Serra, and Lisa Yuskavage. Les Kurt Schwitters Mertzbahn in 2015. Photo, literal. German artist Kurt Schwitter's last remaining Mertzbahn may be moved to China if the owners of the site cannot raise enough funds to maintain it, Francis Perordon of The Guardian reports. Located in Langdale, Cumbria, in northwest England, the building served as a refuge for Schwitter's when he fled from the Nazis in 1940. The artist made a collage of stone, cement, and found objects on the walls of the structure before he died in 1948.
The materials were moved to the Hatton Gallery in Newcastle in the 1960s, and the building has since been regarded as a UK cultural heritage site. The Literal Arts Trust, which owns the property, has been committed to maintaining the site. However, the Arts Council England has rejected its last five applications for funding in support of its upkeep. On Sunday, Ian Hunter, who runs the small charity with Celia Lana, said that they have run out of options. The Trust plans to put the barn up for sale, and it is expected to net around $475,000. Before Hunter and Lana listed the building on the open market, they said the Trust was approached by a wealthy Chinese art collector who made an offer for the barn and expressed an interest in relocating it to Shenzhen, China, where the prospective buyer's collection is located. More this is absolutely bonkers, given the public arts funding already invested in the project, Hunter told The Guardian. The good causes lottery ticket purchases, and the taxpayer have the right to ask who at the Arts Council is behind these incompetent decisions, and why while the Arts Council England has allocated funding in support of the barn in the past, an ace spokesperson said that the council's role does not include protection and restoration of cultural heritage and claims that this is the responsibility of other bodies. The representative added that the previous funding awarded to Literal Arts was for a contemporary program that it held for a number of years. In the past, several artists, including Damien Hirst, Anthony Gormley, Bridget Riley, and the late Zaha Hadid, have all made donations in support of preserving the structure. Less the Morgan Library Museum in New York. The Morgan Library Museum in New York announced today that it was awarded a $5 million grant from the Sherman Fairchild Foundation. The funds will be used to endow the leadership position in the Conservation Department and to support the restoration of the exterior of its 1906 McKim Building, the original library of founding benefactor, Pierpont Morgan. Colin B. Bailey, director of the museum, said, The McKim Building is the historic heart and soul of the Morgan. Its preservation and restoration is the institution's highest priority capital project over the next decade. Designed by Charles Follen McKim of the architectural firm of McKim, Mead, White, the neoclassical structure is a national historic landmark. The Morgan completed a restoration of its interiors in 2010, known for its work across a variety of media, including rare books, prints and drawings, and medieval and Renaissance manuscripts, as well as for its education and training programs. The museum's center state-of-the-art Thor Conservation Center was established in 2002, the new King Abdulaziz Center for World Culture. Courtesy, S. N. Hetta. The King Abdulaziz Center for World Culture in Darin will become Y operational by this summer, according to the ARC newspaper. The complex, also known as Ithra, will be the Saudi Kingdom's largest cultural center and will be dedicated to promoting the arts and heritage of Saudi Arabia. A colossal stainless steel building located along the Persian Gulf, the center was funded by the government-owned oil conglomerate Aramco and designed by the Norwegian architecture firm SN Hetter, whose past projects include the National September 11th Memorial Museum. SN Heta won a design competition for the center in 2007 and began construction the following year. With 100,000 square meters of facilities and construction costs totaling around $400 million, the think tank will include a cinema, library, auditorium, exhibition hall, museum, and archive. Consisting of 18 floors dedicated to educational programming, its Knowledge Tower will host workshops in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Ithra's museum will incorporate four galleries, including one focused on Islamic design and heritage and another devoted to modern and contemporary art in the Middle East. The institution will also implement pedagogical programming for local and international audiences. The center was officially inaugurated by King Salman bin Abdulaziz, on December 1. As part of its Bridges Initiative, a cultural exchange and global outreach program, the center collaborated with the Brooklyn Museum on Ahmed Mehta, Mecca Journeys, an exhibition focused on urbanization in Mecca, which will remain on view through April 8, 2018. The Frank Lloyd Wright designed Lockridge Medical Clinic in Whitefish, Montana, photo, Brenda Ahern for Daly into Lake. A commercial property in northwestern Montana may become the first building designed by acclaimed architect Frank Lloyd Wright to be demolished in over 40 years. Mick Ruiz, the owner of the building, has agreed to sell the premises for $1.7 million before January 10. When Ruiz bought the building for $1.6 million in 2016, he had no knowledge of its cultural or historical significance.
If a buyer cannot be found before Wednesday, the Lockridge Medical Clinic in Whitefish will be destroyed and replaced with a three-story mixed-use development. This comes as a great shock to us, said Barbara Gordon, the executive director of the Frank Lloyd Wright Building Conservancy, a Chicago-based nonprofit devoted to the preservation of buildings architected by Wright. Fruitful discussions were still taking place to bring about a successful resolution to this case, which the Conservancy and our local partners have been working on for more than a year. The Lockridge Medical Clinic opened in 1963 after being designed by Wright in 1958, a year before his death. The brick and cast concrete structure is one of only three buildings by the architect that were built in Montana. Designed for Dr. T. L. Lockridge, the 5,000-square-foot clinic features a massive brick fireplace, double clear restory windows, and a 64-foot glass wall. The venue was used as a medical facility for only one year since Lockridge passed away in 1964. The building has since been occupied by the First State Bank and the law firm Morrison Frampton, who moved to a new location, after it sold the property to Ruiz, last year. Martha Contemporary, a cultural nonprofit based in Martha, Texas, that presents a year round exhibition program, workshops, and educational initiatives, in addition to hosting a residency program, has announced that it is permanently closing its doors. The space has been led by curator, art historian, and educator Kate Green since 2017. Green will soon take up the post of curator at the El Paso Museum of Art, located at 100 East San Antonio Street. Marfa Contemporary has been free and open to the public since it was founded by Oklahoma's City Arts Center since renamed Oklahoma Contemporary Arts Center in 2012. Over the years, it has staged exhibitions featuring artists such as Jose D. Vila, Spencer Finch, Laurie Frick, and Anne-Marie Nafziger. Its final exhibition showcased the work of the Peruvian-born and Miami-based artist William Cordova. On January 13, the art space will hold its last event, a participatory performance by New York-based artist Autumn Knight, who will open and close parts of the building with collaborators, including other artists and Ians, as the audience follows. The piece will be followed by a closing party featuring by DJ Little Danny. The Magazine 3 Museum Foundation for Contemporary Art's new space in Tel Aviv. The Magazine 3 Museum Foundation for Contemporary Art in Stockholm has announced that it plans to open a new satellite space in Jaffa, the ancient port city from which Tel Aviv has now grown. The 2,000 square feet space is located at 34 Ole Zion, a residential neighborhood that borders Jaffa's famous flea market. This is a truly exciting addition to our city, Karmic Galilee, the general manager of the new venue, said. The satellite defines Magasin II's long standing involvement with the cultural scene in Israel. The area where Magasin 3 Jaffa is located has a rich and mixed history and we are very much looking forward to contributing to it and engaging with new audiences. An exhibition featuring works by Israeli-born American artist Haim Steinbach will inaugurate the space. Opening on January 20, the, the show is the artist's first in Israel. Haim Steinbach belongs to the most quintessential group of contemporary artists, those that so importantly have pushed the boundaries of visual expression, curator David Newman said. The upcoming exhibition will clearly establish a benchmark for future presentations at Magasin 3 Jaffa. More the Magasin 3 Museum has been closed to the public and will remain closed for the next two years. The institution is working on a strategic plan that will it allow it to better serve artists. Details about its future programming in Stockholm will be announced later this year. Less the Toledo Museum of Art. Roberta Gedert writes for The Blade that the Toledo Museum of Art is expanding its campus. The institution acquired five parcels of land, three of which were sold to the museum by the Glenwood Gardens LLC for $150,000. The institution purchased the other two, formerly owned by the Glenwood Lutheran Church, for $100,000. This is not strategic per se, it was opportunistic, Adam Levine, the museum's associate director, said. We don't actually have a use, but they don't make land anymore, so given the opportunity to control that, it was the right decision, according to Jean Emery, president of Glenwood Church Council. All five properties were previously community gardens that were being maintained by the non-profit program Toledo Grows.